One of the most surprisingly widespread and actually quite powerful concepts in uh, counting arguments and combinatorics is the pigeonhole principle. And it seems, I think, maybe too, too simple and too obvious to be, to be useful, but that isn't the case. And we take it as axiomatic, so we don't prove it. I think it's fairly self-evidently true. But it says that the if we have m pigeons, which need to occupy n pigeonholes, and m is greater than n, more pigeons than pigeonholes, then at least one pigeonhole must have multiple pigeons in it. So if I have a group of eight people, there's only seven days of the week, then there must be at least one day of the week that multiple members of the group of eight people were born on that day of the week. So we would define the eight people as the pigeons, the seven days of the week as the pigeonholes, and I would say there are more pigeons than pigeonholes, so one pigeonhole must have, well, at least one pigeonhole, must have more than one pigeon in it. Maybe it's Saturday that multiple people were born on, maybe it's Wednesday, maybe it's Wednesday and Saturday, but there is at least one day of the week that more than one member of my set of eight people was born on. When we prove something by the pigeonhole principle, the usual setup is just to carefully define what the pigeons are and what the pigeonholes are. So a simple question here would be to say that if I select any five integers from the set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five distinct integers, I will always select two, which sum to nine. Well, the obvious thing to set as my five pigeons are the five integers which I pick. And there are four pairs of numbers which sum to nine. One plus eight, two plus seven, three plus six, and four plus five. So I'll define the four pigeonholes being the possible pairs which sum to nine. So what I've got now is I've got five pigeons to place into four pigeonholes. So at least one of those pigeonholes will have two numbers in it. So therefore I will have both members of the pair, one and eight, or two and seven, or three and six, or four and five, which sum to nine possibly more than one of those, but I will have at least one pigeonhole which has more than one pigeon in it. A slightly more complicated uh, example, which I can prove by the pigeonhole principle, relates to friendship. So if I have n people, and n has to be a positive integer, and for the sake of this problem, it has to be greater than one. So two or more people. What I want to show is that whatever the size of the group, n, at least two of them have the same number of friends in the group. Now this works if I assume that friendship is symmetrical. So if person A is friends with person B, then person B is necessarily friends with person A. I will prove this through two different cases. Let's assume that everybody has at least one friend. If this is true, then everybody has between one friend and n minus one friends in the group, because there's n minus one other people. So if that's true, then I can say the n people are n pigeons. And I can then start to say I have a set of people who have one friend, a set of people who have two friends, a set of people who have three friends, and a set of people who have 
dot 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 all the way up to n minus 1 friends. If I define those as the pigeonholes, then I can say there are n minus 1 different numbers of friends each person might have, n minus 1 pigeonholes, but I have n pigeons to go into them. So I have more pigeons than pigeonholes, so at least one pigeonhole must have multiple pigeons in it. So at least two people must be in the same number of friends group. So there's at least two people have the same number of friends. Now that's true if everyone has at least one friend. Let's consider the other case, whereby there is at least one person with no friends. Well, I do the same thing when I say that I've got n minus one people who have a non-zero number of friends. And because one person has no friends, the number of friends in the group, the remaining n minus one, has to be between one and n minus two of them. So I can use the same pigeonhole argument to say I have n minus one pigeons to go into one of n minus two pigeonholes. So out of that group, there has to be uh, at least two pigeons in the same pigeonhole. So at least two people with the same number of friends. And of course, if there's two people with no friends, then trivially, those two people have the same number of friends, i.e. zero. So the statement's obviously true. So those seem like really simple arguments. But if you want to read up more on the pigeonhole principle, it has a lot of powerful applications, including things like proofs about lossless data compression and other interesting problems in computer science.